Hello and welcome to Cube Sports. I'm Omudro Gajaga. Thank you for joining us. Coming up tonight, we're talking about women's football, football diversity, discovery football in Germany. Gambian women went to attend the program and we'll have them in the studio to talk about how the program has been and how they're going to use it, the power of football, to change some of the challenges women footballers are facing. Also on the program, we'll be talking about the Gambia's second division as Falcon are crowned champions. We'll also be talking about the first division as Fortune are drawn against Entente Setif of Algeria in the CAF Champions League. All that on tonight's Q Sports. <laughs> Welcome and thank you if you're just joining us. First, we're talking about diversity in football, using the power of sports to help develop the women's game. Gambian women footballers, ex-footballers I have to say, have attended a week-long program in Germany, in Berlin, called Discovery Football. We'll bring you an up-to-date on that as we have a studio discussion. <laughs> We're talking about women's football in its other form. That's football diversity. 12 Gambian women returned from Germany to attend a week-long football forum, which talks about cultural diversity. It also talks about issues affecting women. How can they use football positively to change some of those cultural practices and barriers? I'm Umudu Gajaga, and thank you for joining us. In this extensive discussion, two of the women who attended that program Fatou Marega is with me in the studio, and also Veronique Aisha Malak. Welcome to the studio. Thank you. Thank you. Let's talk about the program. It's called Discovery Football. You attended it in Berlin, Germany. Just last week, you were in Germany to take part in this activity where 10 other countries were also part of, in Africa, Asia, and Europe. Um, tell us about your experience. Well, assalamu alaikum. Um, it was a wonderful program at Discover Football in Bali in 2021. And the Gambia, Queen Scorpions joined in for the first time. It was amazing because um, the kind of programs that took part were amazing for women's football because we have, um, the program is uh, segmented into three parts. The first one is to, uh, to have this discussions on panel, talk about issues or challenges that affect women in their various ways from their communities or countries. Also to talk about health issues because the topic this year is connected to health due to coronavirus global pandemic. And also we have those three days um, football phone tournament that bring people together and everyone was colorful and everything was nice because playing in mixed football is different from competing from team by team. And the beauty was you'll see one Gambian player playing for Spain or playing for another country different from your ho own home country. So that makes it beautiful for everyone to come together, see a diversity and learn from each other. As well from learn also from different coaches, because coaches we are in the program different from di coming from different countries. That's fantastic for a start. Fatou Marega, you are from the Lower River region. You are the women's football coordinator there. As far as Heart Academy is concerned, everybody knows you, that um, you're somebody who is well connected when it comes to the development of the women's game in the regions. For someone like you to take part in this program and with all the cultural issues that you are facing, you remember the other time you were telling me some of the cultural practices seems to be a barrier for the progress of the women's game. Taking part in this program, tell us how would it change um, when you arrive in the Gambia? Do you have a new mindset, a new concept of how to go about, you know, tackling some of these cultural practices? Thank you so much. Uh, this uh, Discover Football Festival it's a great important to me in developing women football in the provincial Gambia. As I said before, we have these cultural barriers where parents believe that football is not meant for women. So I, someone from the regional Gambia, the provincial Gambia, rather, attending an international festival where I, I am with different people experiencing a lot of different challenges when it comes to women football. So it will serve as an encouragement and also motivation to the girls in the provinces to push into football so that they can also be like me. Because when I came, I can see some 
having this zeal that I would also continue on playing football so as to get the chances that you got in women football. And likewise, for the parents too, that have the culture, I believe, that they are eradicating it in their mind that football is something that can develop one person from one level to another. In terms of the people that you met there from different countries, what has been their stories? What have they been saying are some of the challenges that they are facing as far as the development of the women's game is concerned in their countries? Yeah, basically, if you look at the challenges of women football, they are all similar. Compare it to other countries because we met with African countries, that is the Kenya and countries like Lebanon, Jordan. So if you look at those countries, they also explain the same challenges that we have in the Gambia. That is in their regional countries, that is the provinces, most of the parents do deny their girls from playing football, so which is a great challenge to them. But experiencing such an event will help them to motivate, to put encouragement to them so that they can also allow their young girls to play the football. Um, now, let me turn to you, Aisha, to talk about that experience bit of it, coaches interacting and learning from one another. How would that help in terms of developing the women's game. We know there are lots of challenges. Even visibility is an issue. Um, you have fewer people watching women's football, especially in Gambia, because we are going to tailor it everything down to what happens on our ground. The challenges are numerous, but how would you use this program to make sure that um, we change some of the things to make the women's game better? Yeah, I start with the coaches, because for them being empowered and motivated alone, it's a good sign. You can see from the games when we were playing, every player was amazing with the Gambian coaches. Why? Because of their experience. And they didn't only sit down one day and got the knowledge, they work for it. So you see it's important if you're doing something, you show the interest and you go for it. So the coach like Sunan Yai, she was the coach for the Queen Scorpions. The second day of the tournament, she was awarded as coach of the tournament, which was a very good um, credit to Gambia going for the first time international, and the coach was awarded. Why? Because he's a competent, he's very good in what he's doing, and she knows what she's doing. So you can see, he's also going to motivate other coaches, whom you know they're at home, to work harder, to earn this B licensing, C licensing, or even A pro, because it's important not to stop at one place, always to be segmented. In life, every day is a learning process. And also players whom you know, they are old, or they are, they are now aging, and they don't know what to do, it's also important for them to see Suna or Choro or Bom as they are um, someone who you know they can learn from or <laughs> up to models, look up yeah. to. Yeah, they are good role models so that I can say I can be a coach. Maybe one day I can be part of Discover team and travel or have another opportunity to travel outside the Gambia and also represent my country as ambassador. We've seen some beautiful pictures coming from Germany. I followed the program's activities on their Discovery um, football Facebook page. I've seen the Gambians in their very beautiful attires. Tell us about that. I, I understand that you wear the best clothes, the best traditional clothes with all your whatever, makeup or what, what you call yes. it, but you will see it in the pictures. Yes, obviously. you know, as we see a small bird pepper, this mm. is the Gambia, you know. We, we already plan for it and we work for it. As we read on the papers and we saw Discover, it's a cultural event and we, we said like it's important for us to go and sell out and show out our cultural attire. So why don't we do something unique as a team? We should have been 12, but you know, Auntie got some little issues, she could not join. So 11 of us discussed, and together we went and bought the same thing, sold the same thing, took our makeups all away, because we are women, you know. We are in football, or sometimes we should look extraordinary. And it's you know, it's international program. So as we went, and you see on the photos and the videos, we are trying to show out that this is the Gambian team. Because unity also gave us that credit. You know, we are one heart and we all work as a team. We agreed to do something and it was tangible. So when we went, that's why the, everyone in the show could not even keep it. They have to say Gambian team dress well and they award us the, the best dress. Next, I'm coming to the football. Fatuma Rega, I saw you yeah. as a goalkeeper. <laughs> Tell us about your experience. I understand you, you suffered a lot of injuries in your hand. Yes. And, you know, whether it's a dislocated shoulder or whatsoever. Tell us if you mm. have recovered. <laughs> have you recovered? I have from recovered the very well. It was really a great experience because it was my fourth <laughs> time being on the goal post. So I was in a team that, you know, we were sort of goalkeeper. So I decided to to uh, told my co uh, coach, that is Chora, and she told me, you cannot do it. I told her, I will. 
So I went and I saw out my full potential, though it was really hard. So How I many came, goals did you conceive? <laughs> almost I conceived a lot of goals. Yeah. Almost really? I was congratulated. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was really painful. Then I came to realize that I should not disturb my goalkeepers every time, telling them you cannot do it you because the work it. is not easy. But it was fun, you know, because it's a fun game. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. seen that, that fun bit of it. And when it comes to that cultural aspect of it, I've seen, you know, the co countries that you've mentioned, Lebanon, Jordan, and, and other countries. How, how is their football? What do they say their level of football is in terms of the, the women's game? Uh, well, as the, everything was planned, this is for veterans who, you know, they want to play for football. Now they're no more active. active yeah. That's why the Gambian team is full of uh, regional reps or people working at the Women's World Association or us administrators. Yeah, but if you can see from other teams, they have very good players like Sabia. They have young players who you know they're playing for the league and it's a second division league. But you know for their second division league and the Gambian league, you can see the difference. The difference. So they are very good players who you know they are good on the ball. So my first experience was on the first game. When we just came, we don't know each other, so it's mixed football. You just have to go to the field and just take one role. But immediately the referee blew the whistle, you will know who can play better, who better cannot play. And, and if everyone and, is... And tell us about your own experience. You, you <laughs> played football before, retired, yeah. but you played in Azerbaijan, the uh, Women's Under-17 World Cup, the famous one. We don't want to go about and talk about all the goals yeah, that you scored. I know. But <laughs> um, how did you find it? Well, for me, it was beautiful. It was amazing because first. Did you show them some skills? Of course, yes. Because also I scored some goals, and I have them on videos. Also. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. I almost play all the finals because you know every day you play seven games, and in the Gambian team, I was ready for it. Even though it was not that much time, but I at least I trained for one week before uh, moving to Berlin. So that energy helped me a lot and endurance to play in all these games for these three days. But it's beautiful. Why? Because if you play football, or oh, once a star is always a star. But you don't just overdo things. And if you can play with good players like players from Sabia, Melissa and the others, you can just make the work easy. And also players like um, Kenyan team, they are very good with the ball because they also want to play football. <coughs> but what makes it more beautiful was when I was expressing my uh, happiness and also telling them my story being been played in the World Cup, everyone appreciated in the FIFA World Cup under 17. Yeah, so it was beautiful. So some of the issues that the women faced that is domestic violence, issues like FGM, issues like um, abuse and harassment and sexual all of those harassment. things, sexual harassment, the famous watchword. Yes. How did you guys talk about that? And how are you going to use football to change that for the positive, to make it better, to make the work working environment conducive? Well, we, we all know these things happen in, in some workplaces, um, if not many of them. Well, yes, people harass by what they say. Yes, people harass by even touching somebody exactly. inappropriately. Exactly, unwanted that, touching. Yeah, unwanted touching, yes. But you, you can dial it more on that. Yeah, it's very important what you just mentioned, sexual harassment or these abuses. This is what kill women or drag women away from football. Because we need only support and motivation. So if you are in the office or we are working in football and there's no encouragement, all, is, all we have is discouragement. We don't have number of girls or women. And we want to increase the number of girls and women participating in football. So these kind of programs like doing this kind of seminars or conference is a tool we use football to send the message across the world. Let people understand women got to be empowered. Women have the right to play football because the game is for all. And even what a man can do, a man can do it better. So we just need the support. An and argument would linger on for years and years. I yes. beg to disagree yes. some at some point. But anyway, but, but just, you know just why I'm on. saying this? Yes. Like one of the challenges also this on, on unequal paid. We train, you train. So why you have it? You earning more. We don't earn more. Why? When the well, national teams are traveling. I would advocate for that. You know. Yeah, you know, it's when very you important. When play in the first division, I play in the first division, I think we should be paid Exactly. Equally. Thank yes. you very much for understanding this. Like the United this. States of America did, you know, to change So that's what we things. want to advocate also. Minds needs to be changed because people are working. And if, a wo and if someone is working for something like football, it's difficult to get paid because we all know how difficult the game is. Just going for training, like the national teams. What men got when they're training or traveling, that's what men should g receive. Oh. But that is the problem we're facing. People and who are in charge time. of football, you are listening, and government. So and also women footballers in this country 
want equal pay yeah, when it comes justice. to the gay. Yeah. So they want equality. I'm going to come to I'm you. I'm sorry, hey. just like what you just did right now, because this is what we also need. People need to see what we are doing. Life without you people in football, then we are zero. People will not even know that the Gambian team is traveling to Berlin for the first time to attempt to discover football or any other activity. Even the National League is going on. Today is the last game of the first division leagues. But how many people are aware that today is the last games? So we need you always because we are partners, we are friends. Let's just keep the relationship tight. Yes, we, we, we should talk about that. Um, basically, for you, Marega, there are issues happening where women have chosen to play football and they want to make a career out of it. They want to make a living out of it. And all of a sudden, their parents want them to go and get married. I'm, I'm so you must have seen a lot of this. Um, how would you advocate to change that? Yes, because maybe I feel I'm not very good at academics and I want to concentrate on football. And my parent comes and says, no, 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 no. Fadu, you need to go. Yeah, it's not meant for you. You need to go get married. Yeah, definitely. It's a big challenge that we are facing. Even at my club, which is Heart Academy, we are facing a lot of these challenges. That is where you will have a very good player that will just come one day and tell you that I'm getting married. So, but I, being someone that has been into women's football and want to see women's football develop in my region, and I have attended an international festival where uh, I have gained knowledge on how to tackle the challenges that we are facing as women in the provincial Gambia. Because normally if you come to the urban areas, it's not a big deal. You see more of the girls playing than in the provincial areas. So I will use myself as a motivational tool to the parents and to the community to talk to them, to tell them that I am someone who is married and a woman as well. And I am into football. Being into football does not mean it is going to change you to be a man. Because that is the concept most of the parents do normally have. They will be like, if you play football, your structures will be like a man. You will see Vera, she played football. But today, if you see her, you thought that she's working in the bank. She looked perfect, she looked beautiful. So we can use this type of people as our motivational tools to talk to parents, to understand the concept behind football. That is not only meant for men, like what Vera said, what women, men can do, women can do even better. So, so that bit of playing football and education because I understand so many people play football and you know they tend to let go their books and, and all of that. In your advocacy I know one should plan for life after football in as much as you want to play football but there is something that you need to work on once you hang your boots because you cannot continue playing football forever and this like both for men and women, but in the women's aspect of the game, have you also thought of these things and maybe talk to some, some players and those who are in the game? Once you hang your boots, there should be something that you should be relying exactly. on. Exactly. Thank you very much for this. Very, very important. Because for me, what I advocate always is football plus education. Education goes with anything you are doing to make a match. And you know, it's always a problem in Gambia. Even our brothers or our sisters, whom you know they are in the game before us, Majority of them, what they think is I'm a star, all I can do ju is just to play football and to just have that fun. You will be calling you Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, and it's just for a short time because everything you do in life, there is time. So it's very important for the players to know that there's life after football, which is very, very important. If you know more playing, you can be even young and have a very bad injury that even uh, physios in the Gambia cannot treat you. We all know how it works in Gambia. Exactly. Very, very We've difficult. Seen that a long time. You, know, you can yeah. be 20 years, between 25 to 30 years, yes. you have a bad injury. Yeah. You cannot go for overseas treatment. So you are still now in the Gambia. Where's the name they were calling you before? Only the name will stay. But what can you do for yourself? And as a woman, you expected to be a mother. You have a family. So how are you going to live your life? And that's what we want to change for the youths, to change their mindset. That is important. Even if you cannot be the best in the class, the most important thing is to be educated. And I and think sometimes life skill also, you can, you can have a skill. About to, a say that, yeah. about to say that, we should just connect what we, we, what we want to do with the life skills. Who said, no, you cannot be a good tailor in the country? No one. You can use your skills. Who is stopping you from being a carpenter man to have your own workshop? You are not under pressure of anyone. You're working for yourself. And I think working for yourself is very, very important. We also have a project like Kick for Trade, helping youth so that whom you, those whom you know, they are even dropouts. 
because you can achieve a lot in life without having a university degree. Who is saying you cannot be a billionaire? Let's use stuff as an example. Which university did he graduate from? But what is stuff doing for Gambia today and the university students? I myself benefited from his project, so I know what I'm saying. So it's important for our youths to change their mindset and know that football, there is life always after football. We must have to focus and determine. Let's use our books. We have to read and write in the schools. Because football, if you're an international player, you'll be interviewed. You'll go for press conference. So if you're in the press, what are you going to say? Sometimes it's embarrassing if you don't have what to answer to the journalists. You know, and you're a big player or a big star. So we have to change our mindset and be doing things on our own. Even our parents cannot pay for our school fees or afford, but let's take, let's do some efforts. Let's try to read around. The internet is around. Youths can take their time, go to the internet, watch videos, do anything. They can use the same time to read books and, uh, and improve their skills in the internet. Hugely important there. Good advice. I'm so, um, a lot of them. Uh, finally, we're going to talk about your medals. You are yeah. having a medal. Yeah, this mm. is Discover. Discover Football, football. Yeah. Germany, Definitely. Berlin. 2021. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> It looks and great the certificate and always. Here, don't forget. Oh, that's a beautiful certificate and as the well. The history of Discover Football, this book. So, it means you are taking part in this football competition. You can see. Yes. That's Eleven women from the Gambia took part in this competition, and this is an acknowledgement and appreciation to say that they've been part of this program. Fantastic. Um, yeah. And I wish you all the best of luck. Thank, thank you, you very much. With that, we say thank you very much for watching this particular part of the broadcast we will continue with q sports to bring you other parts as well stay tuned and now let's talk about the calf champions league as fortune are drawn against algerian side Anton Sitif. and the matches are going to be like this from the 17th to the 19th of September is going to be the first leg and the return leg a week later. The first leg is going to be at the Independent Stadium as Fortune will host the Algerian side Anton Satif in the CAF Champions League preliminary stages and the return leg to be played away in Algeria. Let's bring you details about that. <laughs> Fortune will take part in their first Continental Club Championship as league champions in the first round preliminary match to be played over two legs. The Petroleum Boys will play their first leg between the 12th to the 15th of September at the Independence Stadium and the return leg in the week of the 17th to the 19th of September. Gambian clubs have faced North African sides in both preliminaries and second round qualifiers of the CAF Champions League and Confederations Club Cup competitions. So far, none were successful in knocking out the North Africans. They are also yet to make it to the group phase of the competition. Fortune were confirmed league champions last month with three matches to spare, with a strong showing in the league, winning 12 matches and drawing 11, and losing three in 26 games. And now let's talk about second division football because Falcons are crowned the champions of the Gambia's second division after trailing in that fantastic match at the Independence Stadium. We'll bring you more details about that in this report. Everybody is happy. Um, 
it's a fantastic feeling. We are all excited. Um, the group um, is, is getting stronger and stronger as we go along. But um, we will again, once again, thank the Almighty Allah for making this rough journey and a tough journey successful. And today, this week, have capped it off with a fantastic victory. Um, and we are very grateful to Allah. Finally, in women's football, it appears to be a very intriguing league because as the league will be decided on the last day of the season. Also, at the Independence Stadium, there were scenes of jubilation for one of the teams. And we'll tell you more about which team are crowned champions of the women's first division league in the Gambia. Police management and the skills that was um, displayed during the game. Thank you very much for watching this broadcast, and we wish you all the very best. We enjoy the pleasure of your company. Have a pleasant night. Bye for now.